Welcome back. I'm Gary Parr. I'm Debbie Rowley. And this is the midweek version of the Fiber Talk podcast that happens twice a week. And it's for needle workers. And let's see, tonight, now this will be get posted a little late on Wednesday, but tonight, uh, be sure and join us. We uh, get our monthly tour at the Gallery 76 Embroider's Guild Galleries. April's going to show us the new exhibit, which is Forgotten Needlework Tools. Ooh, I bet that's interesting. Yes, I'm really looking forward to it. She said that that um, uh, normally their exhibits are on, on the walls, obviously, um, but all these tools and everything are in, in, in casements. So I, ho- I hope she can have a stool and sit down and just roll around <laughs> and, yeah. and show them. But, uh, yeah, it, it's going to be really interesting because, you know, you talk about antique, but these mm-hmm. are forgotten. So it's going to be interesting to see what uh, uh, what they have. So, um, yeah, that's tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. And if you miss it, uh, it's going to, it'll be on the YouTube channel after the fact. But uh, do check it out because um, I got a feeling we're going to see some stuff you won't see anywhere else. So it'll be oh, good. Probably. Yeah. So we have that. Uh, we have the Amanda Roll um, sampler, Mary Jane Fry 1861, that you can download for free at MJF. 18, uh, we talk fiber.com slash MJF 1861 and you can get kits from Sassy Jacks at slash MJF 1861 kit. So take advantage of that. And of course, uh, we're working on that Spring Hill, uh, Spring Hill design, Karen Kluba. Uh, we talk fiber.com slash Spring Hill and you can get in on that uh, from um, Needle in a Haystack because Kathy has that all set up. And uh, join us for that. Jennifer is probably halfway. Beth and I, not so far. I'm really dragging. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's not like you have anything else to do. Right. So. Right. Yeah. You're just procrastinating and putting it off. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. Yeah, like 10 minutes spare time. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, and then now the Wednesday shows. Now, keep in mind the Wednesday shows next week, uh, Kim Young uh, from uh, Sassy Jacks will be with us, and uh, sh- what she's going to do is share some of her collection of antique samplers. Ooh. Yeah, and she has she's a, a bit of a collector. Doesn't make a big deal out of it, uh, and reproduces some through her Sassafras uh, brand. But uh, yeah, she has some interesting things. So she's going to join us next Wednesday to do that, and then of course the uh, following Wednesday, Kathy Ray will be back for another episode of Thread Talk. And this time she's going to talk about ground cloth and how it relates to uh, to threads and that whole interaction there. So that'll be, um, that'll be good. Her first one last month, if you haven't watched it, be sure and watch it. Uh, very interesting. She just went through the different kinds of thread types and told us various things about them. It was really, really fascinating. Uh, several comments, people had learned an awful lot from that. And then, of course, uh, threads and cloth go together. So this week, this month, uh, we'll do that. And you can mark that down. Third Wednesday of every month will be our thread talk with Kathy Ray from Needle in a Haystack. So mark that down to be sure and, and catch the show. Um, May 2nd, all these announcements. Uh, May 2nd, Joanna Kabanoff will be our guest. She'll be our guest the Sunday prior. Wait a minute. I got my day scooped up. Anyway, May 2nd. Uh, we will have Joanna Kavanoff as our guest, I believe that's Sunday, and her take wing design, which uh, was a, a big hit at the recent expo, we are going to start a stitch along, um, you know, kind of a spring start stitch along with her take wing design, and we'll have kits from uh, Sassy Jacks available, so be sure and check that out, Joanna Kavanoff, but that's coming up uh, 1st of May. Um, and then Sunday's guest will be Car- designer Carolyn Standing Webb. So that'll be fun, too. All kinds of stuff coming up, as always. Mm-hmm. Yes. Never uh, never a dull moment. Mm-mm. Yep. So uh, we haven't talked in, like, forever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I see coming through my uh, mail uh, email, your, you have a new chart up. Let's update what, what's going on at Debbie's Design so people can take advantage <laughs> of things. Okay. Well, we're doing our kit of the month, and I release the new kit on the first of every month. 
So we have January, we have February, March, and April. So we just released April last week. And um, the way that we're doing our kit of the month is if you just want January, you don't have to buy the rest of them. If you want all of them, of course, we'd love for you to have all of them. But you can pick and choose the ones that you want. They are available throughout the year. So you don't have to get March's kit in March. You can order it another time if you want to. So we also just, I had been getting a lot of um, questions about how I was finishing it. So we decided to offer a finishing kit. So the finishing kit will have mat board, um, a six inch square, and then a six inch square with a four inch window cut out of it. Fabric and batting it does not include the cording or the glue because <laughs> I'm not mailing glue to people. I'm limit, sorry. Folks. That's just not going to happen. <laughs> and my husband said, well, do you want to make cording? I said, I don't want to make cording. You know, I'll show you how to make cording. I don't want to make cording. Right, so anyway, right. so we have the April <laughs> kit of the month <laughs> and it, it's the fabric that I used for my finish. And um, just between us, I'll be announcing it probably in the next day or two as soon as I get it here. We're going to retro finishing kits for January, February, and March. Oh, excellent. So um, I was able to find the exact same fabric that I used for February and March. It never occurred to me that people would want to finish it the way I did because you know, and I've said several times, I am not a finisher. You're functional. <laughs> and I'm functional. I get it done. But, you know, these are small and... You don't want to spend more for the finishing for something like this than you did for the whole kit. And, you know, it's only three or four hours of stitching. And so you can't really justify $100 to finish it. Right. I get that. And so we are, the fabric has been ordered. Part of it is already here. The rest of it should be here today and tomorrow. And uh, we'll put them on the website when we get our finishing kits for January, February, March ready. And then going forward, I will always offer a finishing kit. Okay, the, so so back up the truck a little bit. So these these monthly designs, now obviously the design is tied into some holiday in the month or some theme uh, that, that makes it make sense in that month. So if I do all 12, then I have something to hang on the wall uh, each or stand up or do whatever with. Uh, each month uh, throughout yeah. the year. Yeah. And they're what, four inch, six inch pieces? They're, they're four inch designs. The finish, it, you know, if you want to finish it the way I did, it's a total of six inches square. Um, I put mine on a little um, easel that I bought at a craft store. It was plain wood. I painted it white. And I put a little ornament hanger on my finish it's it's like a window frame finish and um put a little ornament hanger on it and i just display it on this easel on the table with my other seasonal displays mm -hmm. and what are we paying for these designs now okay so the the whole kit includes the line drawn canvas needles thread embellishments if there are some or crystals or whatever and uh, the whole kit is thirty two twenty five. Oh, the whole shoot and match. The whole shoot and match. Yeah. And then we ship it in priority mail envelope. So that's seven seventy five. So the whole thing is forty dollars. Oh, that's all right. So you get so you can get yeah, okay. So you get a nice little design each month mm -hmm. to stitch. Yeah. Now are these still uh, uh uh drawn on the canvas by the famous Rod Rowley or <laughs> No, they're drawn well. We both draw on the canvases. Okay. Whatever needs to be done, we do. Can, can we can we <laughs> can we request pencil work by Rod Rowley? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, you probably could, but I don't think anybody else could. Okay, so, all right. Well. You know he he helps with uh, <laughs> we <laughs> he helps to bind the edges of the canvas and to package and to ship and. We've been making finishing kits. He helps with that. He draws on the canvas if he needs to. He puts threads in bags. He um, January and um, April have a special embellishment that he used, that he created with his 3D printer. And so, you know, you get the, like, uh, April is an umbrella. And the embellishment is an umbrella handle. Hmm. And so he prints them on his 3D printer and they go in the kit. Outstanding. 
Well, he's just yeah. be, he's just be kind of become kind of your own little personal Sherpa here. Yeah, this Mr. Is, Debbie. Yeah, he's been he's been Mr. <laughs> Debbie for years. <laughs> go Rod. We to, you know, we'd go to trade shows, and then you know that someone called him Mr. Debbie, and it just kind of stuck. He's Mr. Debbie. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. But, Good know, to have he, it. he does whatever needs to be done to help, and of course, he does the website, maintains the website, and. Uh, uh, keeps it updated and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> go rod. <laughs> go rod. <laughs> and, and, and he'll and he'll go bike riding with you anytime. Get to out to Oklahoma, he'll go bike riding with you at any time. Absolutely. Yeah. Or fly remote control airplanes or real airplanes or do whatever you want to do. And um, so the finishing kit that's the mat board batting and fabric is $10. And it can ship in the same envelope with the kit. So fifty dollars, you have the whole thing. Wow, that's pretty good. Okay. Yeah, they're cute little cute little designs too. Yeah, I bet you're having fun putting them together. Yeah, they are. I'm I'm working on my May design now, and I've ordered the threads, or I've got threads coming in to stitch oh, them. Oh, see, I, f- I figured you were up to like October. Oh, Debbie. Oh no 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 no. <laughs> Oh Lord, Gary! I have I teach Zoom classes uh, every week. I know, I've, I've I know. I just... week, I've got models that I have to stitch for seminars for next year. I've got instructions I have to write for seminars for this year. No. What's your problem, lady? Come on. Oh Lord, yeah, no. I uh, I am kind of keeping up, but you know, I'm, I'm I keep thinking eventually I will be able to you know work a little ahead yeah because yeah. you know we're having problems getting supplies in and we want to have the supplies in-house so we can ship on the first and that has not worked out and so yeah. it's been a challenge and so I do want to get ahead so that I can place my orders and hopefully have things in-house right ready to ship but it, it's I'm I'm pedaling as fast as I can. <laughs> so so that issue is still still well it, we knew it would take a while for things to yeah. to settle down. So it's still very much an issue for you yes. uh just to basically get threads and canvas and yes. those yes. things. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I ordered pewter canvas for a couple of classes in November and I still have never received it. Mm. And so uh, I had to scramble around and find it from retail sources to put my class kits together, which, you know, yikes. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I had two yards coming from this shop and yeah. a yard and a half from that shop. And, you know, anyway, so I still have not received pewter canvas. I don't know when, when or if I will ever get pewter canvas, in which case models have to be restitched because if I can't get the canvas, I can't offer the class. Right. And Krynik is running eight to ten weeks. Holy smokes! On orders because wow, there's um, I don't know if um, I don't know why they're having to maintain social distancing in their factory, and it's not a big factory, right? Um, and so Doug is in the process of trying to put on a third shift, but you know <laughs> they got so backlogged because they had to be closed for a time yeah. and. People were stitching like crazy and wanting threads. And anyway, so he, yeah, let's, got, yeah, let's just back up that. A thread company, company, a specialty thread company is in the process of working around the clock to yeah. keep up. What does that say? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, he's got all these back orders that he's trying to, to fill which makes it really challenging for me because I'm looking at, okay, I've got classes in August and classes in September. I have no idea what the registration numbers are, but should I go ahead and get my orders in for those classes now? Right, right. So that I can have some reasonable expectation of getting the kits out in a timely manner. <laughs> yeah, and, and what people don't realize about Krynic Threads, or I don't think a lot of people realize is they don't just service the needlework industry. They have oh, uh, no, quite no. a quite a business in other places, fly oh, tying yeah. and all other places. Oh yeah, they've got a lot of things that they do, and um, yeah. So, so, <laughs> so it's a challenge. Yeah. All well, all leisure and, all leisure things that everybody uh, had time for. Yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> you know it, it's not just Krynik. DMC is backlogged because they were closed for a time, and of course their threads come from France, and so. 
In November, when I ordered my pewter canvas, I also ordered satin floss that I needed for a, a class. Never arrived. Still has never arrived. The distributor doesn't have it. I can't order directly from DMC unless I pay retail, which I don't want to do. Right. And um, so I had to make a substitution finally because I just I had no idea when it was going to come in. Still hasn't come in. It's been six months. So, nice. what ha- what happens there when when you get in a situation like that? You say I got to make a substitution. Mm-hmm. Is that usually pretty easy to do? No, or, no, that's a no. challenge because you don't want to compromise the challenge. design. I don't want to compromise the design, you know. And if it was just a cotton floss, well, you know, Presentia makes cotton flosses, and you know, there's some other places. And I could probably find a similar color and have it in no no big deal. But this was rayon floss. Oh. <laughs> and as far as I know, DMC is the only one that makes rayon floss. Mm-hmm. So I had to go to Edmar, which does rayon pearls for Brazilian embroidery. And I had to place an order with them. So the thread that I got in, it's not quite the same color. It's not quite the same weight. So anyway... <laughs> Well, it's it's interesting because uh, I think as as needle workers we don't appreciate those subtle little not subtle I mean these little things that happen that have you know it's kind of a, a princess in the pea kind of thing mm-hmm. just a little thing that has yeah. a, a much greater impact on a design and whether you can offer a class and 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 do yeah. it in a timely fashion and you know there's a, there's a perfect example. Uh, <laughs> Go into a thread that most people can't even, wouldn't even know existed, just to to keep things intact. And, right. Yeah. Yeah. And you know when I I put it in the kits and sent them out, and I said you can use it or not. You've got other colors of rayon floss that you can use. You can substitute a cotton floss. I always give my students the option of you don't have to use a thread that you don't like. If you don't like right. rayon floss, don't use it. Substitute cotton, it'll be fine. But I felt an obligation because their kit was supposed to contain a certain right. number of threads, a certain texture, certain colors. I felt an obligation to provide that. Yeah. Well, sure. As, a, as an artist, does that, that must get frustrating when you put a design together and before you even put it in people's hands, you have to start adjusting things that like frustrating or are you getting used to it? <laughs> no, it's very frustrating. And um, like, for instance, for my kit of the month, because we had so much trouble getting certain threads in, I've started, you know, okay, so I've picked out the threads that I want to use for May. And I contacted the thread manufacturer yesterday and said, do you have an ample supply of this thread in stock? <laughs> Because I haven't stitched the model yet, yep. and if you don't, I'll do something different. Key phrases, ample supply and in stock, yes. In stock, yeah, <laughs> because, you know, I'm placing orders for about 100 skeins of each thread right? For, for the kits. And so, you know, not everybody can turn that around immediately. And so I, I just need to make sure, you know, because I've got some other options. I could use something different. But yep. I want to check with you. This is the thread I want to use. I want to find out, do you have it? Mm-hmm. Are you having your own supply issues getting threads? Because, you know, I'm I'm using Trainway Silks for May. And they dye all the colors, but they have to have their base threads to dye. Right, right. Yep. And they're, and they're stuck in the Suez Canal. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. There's... It, well, she said, and we were talking about the supply issues, and she said, you know, back in, uh, she placed a big order, and, and um, the supplier could ship it without any problem. Their mills were running, and it was not a big deal. Then it got stuck at the docks in L.A. Oh, uh-huh. So, you know, it, it's not just can the manufacturer supply it, can they get it to you? And then she had other issues with Canadian Post, and um, U.S. mail, and you know, it it it's a cascade right, of things, right. and it, it's not just one thing; it's a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you get the dye? Because of the yeah. March, yeah. I used Threadworks. Well, I wanted the threads I wanted to use. They can't get the dye anymore. So I okay, fine. I'll use something different. 
and um, they also over Krynik. And so I used a Krynik and they couldn't get the Krynik from Krynik in order to dye it to send it to me. <laughs> so it was just, yeah. oh my gosh, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Well, I see, I think this is important to discuss because you're one designer who has X amount of classes and X amount of students. Yes. And you know if you if you follow any of the board any of the uh, postings and everything or even you know talking to shop owners you know they they're constantly saying you have to be patient with us. Mm -hmm. You know people yeah. who are 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 banging on these uh, shop owners and designers and teachers yeah. for materials this is illustrative of what one person is dealing with mm -hmm. to be able to offer kits and classes. Yeah. And you take that and multiply that times how many thousands across the world. And it's it's just a, a huge problem. And I'm sure every factory that produces this stuff, is, well, you know, Krynik's going to a third shift for crying out loud. They're doing everything they can, but they're limited. And then if they don't get supplies, it, you know, I, I can't get the dye. How can I dye a thread if I don't have the dye? And, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. The whole thing, yeah, the whole supply chain is just fractured. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, you know, when, when you, people just have to be patient and there's nothing yeah. new. And I, and I, every time I, uh, start to get a little impatient with something, I just go down to my corner and look at all the stuff that's sitting there, <laughs> you know, and I just, yeah. I just, just shut up and go stitch something else. You know? Yeah. But, just, you know, you'll have to do something. You can't yeah. do the thing you want to do right, right. this minute. You'll be able to do it eventually. And so now it's time to go do something else. And that's hard for me too. Right. I mean, that's really hard for me because I I am a one project at a time stitcher. Right. And I currently have two projects going. Ooh. Which Ooh, Debbie. makes me nuts. <laughs> and at one time I had four projects going, which really makes me crazy. <laughs> And so, you know, one of them's been put on hold, one of them got finished, and so now I just have two. But, you know, it's it's the kind of thing that um, you have to be able to make adjustments. You have to be able to um, be flexible. And a lot of people don't want to be flexible. Right, right. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's understandable to a point because you're used to being able to place an order and have it shipped. <clears throat> but um, uh, you know, it's, there's nothing anyone can do in the no. entire supply chain because they're all affected by something, and everybody has a has to source something from somebody else. That's you right. Know, all the way back to the the silk the silk uh, worms, you know. It, it, yes, exactly. It, but but it, it's that whole chain, and it's if you can't get the stuff and it can't get shipped, and people are working with reduced staffs, and it just has to. It just comes to start, and, and that I think that's probably the most frustrating is that if it, if it just all was cut off, it would be easier to deal with than the dribs and drabs of yeah. uh, this part showed up today, and maybe next week I'll get the rest of it. And yeah, um, you know, there you sit with partials. <laughs> that's yes. tough. Yeah, it is. It's it's very challenging, and you know, there, I have been awake at night, unable to sleep. Because yeah. worried about, is this going to come in? When will I be able to ship the kits? When will I be able to do this? What do I need to do to make the adjustment? How can I, how can I fix this? How can I move this forward? Yeah, yeah. Constant, yeah. You can't just relax mm -hmm. and create and mm -hmm. stitch. You have to... Mm -mm. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> so what is your reading on... Now, we've got the, uh, the uh, EGA saying that by the end of May, they're going to be able to make a decision about yeah. their seminar. Yes. I have not tracked A&G's seminar, and you're teaching at both of those. Yeah. What is your reading on that? Are you and, and are you preparing for live and online, or how are you addressing that as a designer? Okay. So... A and G is going to be virtual again this year. Oh, it is for sure. Okay. They made the announcement a couple of days ago. So I'm really comfortable with virtual classes. I, um, I like them because we're not limited to the number of people that can be physically in the classroom. Um, so that means that more people have an opportunity, but on the other hand, I also enjoy going to seminars, seeing people face to face, 
all the uh, associated events with seminar. I, I really enjoy that. So I'm really hoping that EGA is still an in-person seminar. Um, now, if they have to go virtual, I'm fully prepared to teach virtually. And in fact, my pilot class for my EGA seminar um, project is a virtual um, online. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if, if I need, if we need to go virtual, well, I've already got experience doing that <laughs> with that yeah. class. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, and, and that's where this, this round with uh, seminars is different than the last one in that you have a lot of experience now doing online classes as mm -hmm. do a lot of other teachers. So it is a rel it should be a relatively easy shift for you. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. And, and you're, I mean, you're, it's not that it's not that different from what I'm doing. Right, right. And you're right. It opens the door to so many more people who can't travel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Do you see that yeah. uh, uh, even when we go back to live? Do you see the uh, classes being offered live and uh, and online, or is there, have you guys had any talk? You designers had any talk about that? Um, I've talked with some of the people that make those decisions, and I'm not really at liberty to discuss okay. what they've what they've said. Um, personally, I think that if A and G and EGA, whose purpose is not just to get together and stitch pretty projects, the purpose for both of them is education. Yeah. And so if we're going to fulfill our purpose, we need to figure out some way to incorporate a virtual aspect into what we're already doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, otherwise we're not going to be able to fulfill our mission. I think people are, um, especially in the demographic for EGA and A and G, are reluctant to travel. And I understand that. I get it. Um they, but they still want to take classes. We have people who can't travel to take classes for any number of reasons. Right. Their family situation, their financial situation, their work situation, their children, their elderly parents they're caring for. There are so many situations that negate the possibility of traveling to take a class. And, you know, why not meet them where they are? Yep. Yeah, we, well, we've had this discussion before uh, in terms oh, yeah. of, of the future of these organizations and the mm -hmm. future of, of, of classes and seminars in general. Um, right. Yeah, we've got to find a way to meet the people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I'm, I'm well set up to do it. I'm very comfortable with it. Um, most of the people in my classes tell me they don't need the Zoom sessions. They don't need the videos because I write really thorough and detailed instructions that yeah. they can do without but the Zoom sessions, the video demonstrations, all of that, I've been doing that, you know, not the Zoom, but I've been doing video stitch demonstrations for five years, mm -hmm. six years, seven years. And so we're well set up to do that. And <clears throat> it's not a challenge for me. You know, they say, okay, we're going to be in person. Okay, fine. I'll buy a ticket and come up there. We're going to be virtual. Okay, fine. No problem. Yeah. I got this. Are you finding, as, as you've done more Zoom classes, are you finding the students getting more comfortable and th that the technology part is just going to the background and uh, it's there's more exchange and more interaction? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, um, I, I'm really proud of a lot of our students who are elderly and they are embracing this new technology to take classes. Yeah. Yeah, boy, there's a statement right there. Yeah, that uh, online classes are fine, but uh, older people who are not so comfortable with technology, mm -hmm. uh, that can be a huge hurdle. So, okay, so it you've seen be. you've seen the even the older people get over that oh, yeah. hurdle. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah, if if they have trouble, they have a neighbor or son or grandson or their niece or somebody mm -hmm. who comes over and shows them exactly what they need to do so they can do it. I mean, my mother-in-law um, who is just turned 83 she has telemedicine appointments and does facetime and doesn't have any trouble with it at all okay all right. and so you know it, it it's really not that much different from doing facetime or 
something like that. It's just, you know, you need to, here's the link, click on the link, join the meeting, you're good. Yeah. Yeah, and, and what a change from when this pandemic started a year ago, where, you know, oh, I don't know if I can do it, how, how are we going to do mm -hmm. this technology? And now mm -hmm. it's it's just kind of almost, uh, probably not second nature, but it certainly is not something you uh, fret over. Yeah, it, it's not that big a challenge, and, and most people are able to log in and join in the meeting. Um, I have very few who say, I can't find the meeting, I can't get in. I have very few with, with that. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, and then once they figure it out, then it's not an issue any longer. Yeah. Well, I, I've seen that with our live shows, too. I can't remember the last time that somebody had trouble uh, getting logged into a live show. It's, mm -hmm. um, it, it, and it used to be that was an issue for a half dozen people with each show, but anymore it's, yeah, people have figured it out. And it's great. It, it opens doors, as you said, and um, allows, you, allows you to go to the people instead of forcing them to come to you. Yeah. Yeah. But but still live live classes um if if available are are still the best. Yeah. Well, I think so. Um I like I said I enjoy the interaction um with the students and the associated events, seeing other teachers, going to have lunch, going to have, you know, a drink or whatever and just the relationship building and conversations and things like that, that, you know, when I sit in my house all by myself, I don't get that. So. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. 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 Lonely Debbie. Well, you have Rod, you have yeah. the Rod thing. So yeah. I have Rod, but you know, <laughs> and, and as wonderful as he is, it's not quite the same as having a stitching right, group. Right. What, what has, what has it done to you now? Uh, I'm a former teacher and, but I only ever did it live and that was a long time ago. And we're three doors away from an elementary school. And every now and then I'll look, you know, be outside or whatever, look at that school. And I wonder, these poor teachers trying to have some kids in class and some mm -hmm. on a screen. And I can't imagine, especially at the elementary level, the, the stress on them to still provide an education. What, yeah. what has, has that changed? The, the online, the virtual, has that changed your teaching style or have you been able to pretty much stick to the way you go about things? I just, you know, I've, I've had to make very few adjustments. Okay. Um, one of the things that I do is before I start an online class, I will send the students a schedule. On this day, I'm going to cover this lesson. These are the stitches we're going to cover. There's a video. This is how long the video is. And so they're prepared and they know what we're going to be discussing and so if they want to work ahead they can if mm. they don't they don't have to but you know I pretty much the only difference is instead of teaching for six hours at a time I teach for one yes yes <laughs> a little less stress there yeah and you know well next week I'm teaching for Great Lakes Region uh, seminar which was postponed from last year now it's going to be virtual but it will be all day classes. And, you know, I did the same thing. I sent them a schedule. This is what we're going to be doing. This is the time we're going to be doing it. So if they need to leave and do something else or, you know, come back in or whatever they can. And um, it, it even in an in-person class, it's not uncommon for people to leave class and then come back in an hour later. It, 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 it happens. Mm -hmm. And so it's not uncommon. And I want people to know that they have that flexibility. Yeah, that they can come and go if they need to. Um, that this is when I'm going to be doing particular things. So if it's something that you're especially interested in, you can make sure you're there. If it's something, oh, I know how to do that, then you don't, you know, whatever. Right, right. So you're building. Okay, that's well, that's yet another plus. Then you're building in the flexibility into the class uh, for people who yeah need to duck out for half an hour and mm -hmm. uh, do whatever. Um, right. Yeah, that's so that's great too. Yeah. It's um it, it I I just you know I ask these questions because as I've said a thousand times it's an ugly way to get there in terms of uh, having to go through a pandemic to to get to this point with the technology but I keep looking at where are the plus sides, you know, what are the plus positives that come mm -hmm. out of this. And to me, the, is particularly in the needlework world, there are so many positives that come out of this that I think and hope will carry on for the foreseeable future in terms of giving people access to education, uh, 
access to new designs. I mean, you, 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 your new designs are the ones you teach with and people can get to them. Uh, it, to me, that's just, there's, there's a lot of positive that comes out of it. I just wish we didn't have to have a pandemic to get there. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. But, um, no, I, I mean, it, there's going to be some good, it's going to be some good. And, and, and I hope that, uh, I really hope that there's a, an effort with these seminars to maintain a virtual, uh, offering for at least some of the classes, just for that very reason. Uh, people can't, you know, the, the EGA seminars in Chicago, you know, a lot of people can't get to Chicago. Right. Um, and it, it opens the door o overseas too. So. And I'd love to see people in Europe doing charted canvas. I think they're missing out. So, <laughs> Well, I do have students in Scotland, and I have um, let's see, Scotland, UK, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand that have joined in on my Zoom classes. And just yesterday, I shipped an order to Switzerland. So, you know. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, that's that's great because it, you talk to people in Europe, and a lot of them have no oh, idea. Oh, they can't get the threads. They can't yeah, get the threads. Yeah. And what they have is tapestry wool, and that's it. Yeah. And thirteen count and Penelope, <laughs> and that that's all they've got. Right. And so you know, uh, like when I was at the Weem School in Scotland um, a couple of years ago, and I was working on my county canvas, and they were like, "What is this?" <laughs> because they had, you know, I was stitching on black canvas and eggshell canvas, and they were so we can't get those colors. And they they have Zweigert canvas just the same as I did. Yeah. And so, you know, it kind of put a bee in their bonnet to contact their representative and say, how come I can't get these colors? Because <laughs> we would rather have, we want to have colored canvas. Sure. But, you know, they, they don't have rainbow gallery threads. They don't have, um, you know, they have cotton and they have wool and they have some metallics. But they don't have all the thread textures that we do. And so, you know, that's why, you know, my student that I have in Scotland, she takes just about everything I offer because she gets a full kit. <laughs> with all the interesting threats and you know i've got students in the uk that some of them order kits and some of them do their own colorway and that's fine um but you know it's just a challenge to get the threats that they want mm. and it it was surprising to me that a lot of them travel to the states with regularity and they always bring an empty suitcase with them mm -hmm. and they return home with all the thread they can pack into it yep i've heard of that too yeah yeah. Yep. It's worth it to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It's, it's well worth it to them. And you know, canvas, they buy canvas, they buy tools, they buy all kinds of stuff that um, they can't get at home. And so they, mm -hmm. when they come to the States for a visit, they're going to a needlework store and they're buying supplies. <laughs> Clean them out. Yep. Mm -hmm. We are so spoiled. You know, we're just disgustingly we spoiled. Yeah, we are. And, you know, I ship internationally. It, it's not that big a deal. But there are a lot of shops and stuff that won't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we don't realize it. We really don't. But, yeah, I've heard that more than once. Take an empty suitcase. It's worth it to mm -hmm. haul it all back. Yep. Just crammed full of threads. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Jeez. When you, you know, one of the things, my, my last teaching job, was in a small farm community and teaching biology to farm students is an interesting experience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because in a lot of ways they know as much or more than you do. Exactly. And, and, and live it every day. So, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, there was some, we were talking about spiders one day and I made some comment or something. And, uh, one of the students says, well, that spider's poisonous. Didn't you know that? Uh, no. <laughs> and so after class, I look it up, sure enough. And, uh, uh, and uh, you know, it's just kind of humbling. It keeps you on your toes. Yeah. And uh, so, and that one always has stuck in my head is uh, those experiences at that school, because I learned from the students in, in some instances, I learned uh, quite a bit and then I would just fold it right into the, to the class. Oh, sure. um, Cause you know, that, there was, uh, it was Dan, Dan DeMarsh was his name, and I was teaching middle school, seventh grade science. And he came in late one day, you know, a top flight student, you know, just a gentleman of a young man, the whole bit, you know. 
And he came in late, and he's never late. Never misses school, never late. He came in, and, uh, oh, 15 minutes late, you know. I'm really sorry I'm late. He says, some of the cows got out. And I thought, okay, this tells you, you know, in, in the farm <laughs> community, this tells you the realities, you know. Oh, yeah. Your, your biology class is really nice, but the cows are wandering around. And yes. <laughs> we got to yes. get them in. But, you know, it's the things I learned from students. Do you, are there things that you pick up from students? I'm sure there are. Oh, yeah, there always are. Um, um, probably, probably not something that comes right to mind. but No, nothing that's coming right to mind right now because, um, you know, I don't want to say that I know everything that there is to know because I certainly don't, not by a long shot. But um, I do learn things from students. Uh, a lot of times I learn about new sources for things, threads, um, designers I'm not familiar with and then yeah. I can go look them up and see what they're doing and, and things like that. Yeah. Um, so I would say the classes that I'm teaching now, not so much as when I first got started teaching, but I almost always learn something from the students. Mm -hmm. Well, and I suppose that, that that happens more in the live courses where you're live, where you have the, the discussions before, after, and during um, probably pick up more things there than you would in a, mm -hmm more structured online virtual course. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a really casual class um, because I know what it's like to sit next to somebody and, and as long as they're not disturbing other people in the class, I don't care if they talk. And I've heard, had some teachers say, Oh no, I want everybody to remain quiet all the time oh. and, you know, leave their phones in their room. I don't want them to have their phone. And I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, you know what, when my dad was so ill, I had my phone with me and on at all times. Right, right. And I'm sure that other people have similar situations. Yep, yep. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah, that's the that phone thing is a problem. Yeah, if, if you're teaching high school students, uh, I don't know, no phones. Sorry, <laughs> but yeah, but, but with, you know, with, that's yeah. high school. I'm talking about people right. who are there by choice, who have yep. paid a great deal of money by <clears throat> choice to be there. Whole different deal. Yeah. Yeah. whole different deal, and I am not going to place demands on them. Yeah. Now, I, I will kind of ask that if you keep your conversations to a low so that you're not disturbing other people. Yeah. And so I kind of keep an eye on that, but otherwise, you're yeah. there to have fun, relax, enjoy your vacation, and I'm going to do everything I can to facilitate that. Yeah. So, you know, that's in an in-person class. It's a little different with a, a virtual class because you can't have everybody talking at once. And <laughs> yeah, I've been in those. Oh. It's just not going to work that way. <laughs> and I do have to ask people to mute on occasion, you know, when their phone rings or their husband asks them a question or their dog starts barking or whatever, because if their dog barks, my dog's going to bark, and then their dog's <laughs> going to bark more, and then it's utter chaos. And so, you know, I do have to have people on mute. Um, but if they have a question, I want them to just speak up. Yeah, yeah. Got to got to tread the fine line there. Yeah, that's that's a funny scenario. Their dog barks, your dog barks, somebody else's dog barks, and yeah. Yes, then, then 80 dogs are barking, and it's just... <laughs> It was a good class, except for the dog barking. Except yeah. for the dog barking. You know, I'm sitting here looking at my dog who's laying here beside me right now. But he was barking his head off earlier this morning. And my husband was like, what was Spirit barking about? I said, I don't know, a leaf blue or, you know, <laughs> yeah. there was a bird in the yard or something. I don't, I don't know what the deal was. Same bird that's been there every day for 20 days, yeah. Well, yeah, he, he <laughs> repeatedly barks at, at our other dog. Oh, that's good. It, if he's in the house and she's outside, he barks his head off because there's a dog in the yard. Well, it's <laughs> your dog, okay? <laughs> oh, goofball. But yep. anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, that's just, uh, um, it's just interesting. The, and I, you know, I enjoy hearing the insights into what you're doing, what you're going through as a teacher and designer in, in these virtual classes and mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, people are experiencing it all around. But I, I think the, the overall message is that they're working and 
you know, if, if people are hesitant to get involved, they want to take a class, but hesitant, uh, dive in because. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how other teachers conduct their classes, but I want you to be successful stitching the project. Yeah. And if that means you need to email me 15 times a day, email me 15 times a day and I will answer your questions. Yep. Yeah, that and, doesn't that doesn't change. You 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 want success, yes. Yes, I want my students to be successful with what they're attempting, and um, I want them to learn things, but I want them to enjoy the project and enjoy what they're working on. Yeah, yep. All right, always fun, always learn something, but we got to stop. <laughs> okay. Yep. Sunday, Carolyn Standing Webb is our guest, and tonight we go to Sydney, Australia for Forgotten Needlework Tools with April. Join us for that. Debbie, we're gonna we we gotta get you on a regular schedule here. Too much time passing, so um, you'll be back <laughs> soon. How's that? Okay, great. That'll be wonderful. <laughs> Thanks for listening. 